Skylum just sent me their beta software for the new program Luminar AI. They asked me to do an overview of this program and it's crazy. If you've used older Luminar programs, you know this software uses wild artificial intelligence to do crazy photo editing, in many cases completely automatically, and Luminar AI takes that to the next level. Let me show you what this software can do. So I've got a few different images here that we can use to test out this software. You can see along the top here, we have four different things that we can click on. Catalog, that's the folder that we're currently looking at. Next up, we have templates, which allows us to click on different pre-made templates. And a lot of these look really good. I can right click down on this icon at the bottom and go to adjustments and revert to original. And then if we click over to edit, we can see that we have a few different options on the far right over here. I'm gonna be jumping around between different images and then some of these different options that we have on the right. Let's start with the very first thing, composition. AI. If I click on this and then I click on perspective here, it's automatically finding the horizon, which is particularly difficult on this image. There's not a clear horizon here. I think it's done a really good job. And then of course, if we wanted to tweak it, we could move this around ourselves as well. All right, next up we have the erase tool. And here's a shot that Patrick took where you can see the light still in this frame. I'm going to make my brush much bigger here. And let's see if we can just paint out this light completely and we'll click erase. You can also use this on small things like blemishes on the human face, but let's see if it can pull this light out of here and boom, perfect job. Let's see if it can uh, pull out this entire light stand here. And once again, click erase. Once again, looks perfect. Let's, uh, let's zoom in here. This model's face is almost flawless as is, but I see a small little mole right there. I'd probably leave that, but just to test this out, let's click on that mole right there and then the little blemish right there and click erase and see if it pulls that out. Perfect. Now, next up here, we have the light panel, and light is probably what you're accustomed to seeing first uh, if you're in Adobe Lightroom or any other editing program. This is where you can change the exposure, the temperature, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, stuff like that. Let's go to an image like this and just see what we can do here. We can change the temperature of the photo. I think the color temperature on this looks pretty good. Exposure also looks pretty good, but maybe I want to darken it just a little bit here. And then I want to boost the highlights. And we can add some smart contrast as well. Now, any of the things that we're doing to these images, we can click on this eyeball on the top here and show us the before and after. And I think that's looking pretty good. Next up, we have the enhance panel and we can just move this slider for accent. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see what it's doing here. Once again, it's using AI to try to figure out like how it can enhance this photo without messing with the subject itself. So we're not losing our models here, but it's adding a little bit more detail in the background. And if you feel like we've gone a little bit too far, you can simply tone it down right there. I think that looks pretty good. Now the next slider is sky enhancer and we don't really have a sky in this shot. Yeah, so it's not gonna work on this image. Let's move over to this image where we do have a sky. And let's see what this looks like if we enhance our sky. Yeah, so uh, that's a pretty significant difference there. Again, not doing anything to the subjects, not doing anything to the foreground, only enhancing the sky. Obviously, I think that's a little bit too much, so we can tone it down. Maybe something like that looks good right there. Next up, Structure AI. This is going to add uh, contrast to different areas of the image. You can see if we pump this all the way up, it's gonna look a little bit uh, too crunchy for sure. But you can do it just a little bit to add a little bit of density in different parts of your image. So the boost appears to be grabbing larger areas. In this case, it's grabbing the uh, waves in the ocean. You can play with this and figure out what you like. All right, for landscape, let's click over to this landscape image here and let's play with this dehaze slider. You can see we don't have much haze at all in this image, but it's definitely bringing out a lot of detail, especially in the sky here. All right, golden hour adds lots of color into the sky. I feel like this image is just 
so underexposed though. Let's go back up and see if we can get a correct exposure on this image. Obviously I'm going a little bit too far with these edits. Um, you can click on this to see side by side if you wanna be able to see the before and after here. And if you feel like you like what you're doing but you've just gone too far like I have in this case, you can grab this slider here at the bottom and just tone it down a little bit. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now on the far right up here, you can see we've got the creative tab here. This is going to open up other options for us. Now, if you guys have seen our past videos that we've done with Luminar, our favorite feature was the sky replacement feature. They still have it here and it's better than ever now. You can click here and it's going to actually replace the sky 100% automatically. In this particular shot, I had a pretty decent looking sky. So it probably doesn't call for a sky replacement, but some other shots like this one that Patrick took in the same location has a really boring sky here. So we can click on the sky selection and we can just go through these different skies. And uh, let's see, let's look at uh, dramatic skies. I think that would fit for this image. Okay, let's say this is the sky that you wanna change it to, but it doesn't look quite right. I mean, if we look at the depth of field here, our trees in the background are blurry, but then the sky is sharp. That doesn't make any sense. So what we can do here is come into the sky defocus and we can just turn this up a little bit and that's going to blur our sky. And then we can change the sky exposure as well. If we feel like it's a little bit too bright, we can play with that here. If we want it to be a little bit cooler, we can move this over this way. Or if we wanna warm it up to match that strobe light that Patrick has in the shot, something like this looks good. And once again, if we look at the before and after here, I mean, huge, huge difference. And we've done no additional editing to this shot, literally just swapped out the sky. Now, if we click down to augmented sky, we can go even crazier and we can start adding elements to the sky. So if we wanted to add uh, birds to the sky, I don't think it's really gonna work with this image, but we could add birds here like that. Um, let's see, I think we can add individual clouds as well. So we can click on place object and then we can move the cloud around like that, changing how much of the cloud we want to show up and the color temperature of the cloud and relighting the cloud to match the background. And we can go into advanced settings and add defocus and everything like this. You can see you can go absolutely crazy with this. And I don't think this image calls for that, but another image, for instance, like this one, that's got a pretty boring sky here. We could do a full sky replacement if we want to, or we could add elements to the sky instead. So we could add an airplane here, we can make it bigger. And as we move it around, it knows the orientation of the sky. And you can see it's actually like, not just moving the plane, but it is changing the orientation of the plane just a little bit, which is really interesting. Let's see what else we've got in here. A rainbow, let's add a rainbow. Let's add a rainbow right there. Gorgeous. Atmosphere AI allows you to do things like add fog to your background. It's not gonna work for any of the images I have. You can see it's like adding a little bit of haze in the background there. Like I said, it wouldn't really call for it with these images, but sun rays, I know everybody gives me crap about the sun rays, but uh, this is quite an amazing uh, plugin. You can see here, if I add the sun rays and then move it around this rock, it knows not to put the sun rays over top of the rock. This is something that you would manually have to do if you wanted to add sun rays in Photoshop. And uh, I agree, I, I don't think this image calls for these sun rays, but if you wanted to add a sun back here and you wanted to tone this down just a little bit, you can get this looking pretty good. And you can also change the length of the sun rays and the penetration of the sun rays and the overall look. It'll change every aspect of these rays. And instead of having to do it all manually, it's really easy to do with the sliders. The next interesting panel here is the mood panel and you can upload your own LUTs or it has LUTs built in. So you can see here, 
if I move between each one of these, it's giving our images a very specific look. So I'm gonna click on color punch hot here, and maybe you feel like you want more of this effect. I probably want a little bit less. So you can just turn this slider right here. And once again, you can add contrast and saturation to this effect as well. Okay, let's jump over to the portrait section. That's the smiley face on the far right side. And this software automatically finds faces and then can change those faces automatically depending on what you want. So if, if this shot was underexposed, for example, I could just click the face light slider and I could brighten up the faces with just one slider. If for some reason I wanted to slim the faces of these children, I could do that automatically. All of these sliders are great if you just have a single person in the frame, but they become even more powerful if you have multiple people in the frame. Let's say you were shooting a wedding party and you wanted to whiten everyone's teeth automatically. All you have to do is come down here to teeth whitening and slide this up. And you can see it whitens both sets of their teeth. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see pretty significant difference here. What if you wanted to improve everyone's eyebrows? What this really does is it finds the eyebrows and darkens them up. I can slide them all the way up to 100. And again, we'll toggle that on and off here. I do think it looks better. Let's go ahead and go crazy with the eyes. We'll go 100% on iris flares, eye whitening, eye enhancer. And let's click this on and off here. Now, again, I think we've gone a little bit crazy here, but you can see just how easy it is to make these changes. And if you want to tone it down, you can. Uh, I think iris flare is probably, yeah, what well, looks a little too wacky. That probably looks good right there. And let's toggle this on and off. I think that looks great. Now I brought this image in just to see if I could fool the software. I have not done this test yet, but I want to see, can it grab both of these eyes? Yes, it can. It still finds, it still finds her eyes, even with her hand over her face. You can see you can enlarge the eyes too, which uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it kind of works for this image. You know, if you wanted to make some uh, punchy looking image, it does work. Let's check out this image again with hands in front of the face. Let's see if we can enlarge eyes. Yes, we can. All right, next down is skin AI. And uh, you can see this girl has amazing skin, just a few little blemishes that we could manually use the eraser tool on if we wanted. Let's just see what happens if we go 100% on skin AI. That's pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. Now, it's obviously a little bit too much, but I, I chose 100%. I mean, let's see what 50% looks like. That is really amazing. I mean, normally what automatic software is doing is it's just kind of blurring everything or it's grabbing big stuff. This is not doing that. I hope you guys can see this on YouTube. It's just faint enough to keep her looking human, but it does really clean up her skin. And then I think manually, if you wanted to come in and grab some of these bigger blemishes, you should probably do that with the eraser tool, but I am very impressed with that. That looks much better than it did on previous iterations of this software. Let's see what shine removal does. <laughs> Again, amazing. All right, so for body AI, we've got the skinniest model imaginable here. Let's see what this does. <laughs> Makes her even more skinny. Okay, so I see you can you can make her wider by going to the left, skinnier by going <laughs> to the right. It's a little much. I don't think she needs uh, much changes here. Abdomen. Oh, look at that. Interesting. Now the last panel that you can click on on the right is the pro panel and you can go through optics and mess with lens distortion, super contrast lets you choose contrast in areas of highlights, midtones, and shadows. You've got color harmony, dodging and burning and clone and stamp. And then this final thing down here is local masking. So if you wanna create a mask and do different things to different parts of the image, you can do that as well. Very similarly to what you can do in Photoshop. Well, that wraps up a basic overview of this software. 
software. If you're interested, check it out in the link in the description. It's not out yet. It should be out sometime in December. You can actually pre-order it today, and we have a couple of other videos that we're gonna be doing with this software on the horizon, so stay tuned for that. We'll see you next time.